Good day for a swell battle. Let's wallop. Welcome back, True Believers and Spectacular Spy fans, to another infectious installment of Radioactive Replay, part 10 of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. In part 9, we just finished all of the races in Manhattan, and now we are going to move on to do all the arcade challenges in Stan Lee's comic stand. And uh, I asked you guys on Twitter what suit you want me to wear, and uh, it's going to be a really good one. I can guarantee you that. And Peter, uh, anything you have to say? from Jameson. Either he can't type or he just invented a new swear word. Wow, that's pretty vulgar. I do say so myself. Jameson is the master of Asperger's. Swearing up a storm, cursing up like a sailor, and just creating new swear words any chance he gets. Good old JJ. Never fails. Ba-bam! Noir goodness, baby. Let's go for it. Wave one. Yes. Nice. By the way, if you guys did not know the reference that I said in the beginning of the episode, you guys are making me very, very upset right now. Even though it's not an old game, it is a very recent new game, Cuphead. Cuphead is awesome. You guys should definitely pick it up. Um, and yeah, you know, why am I doing the uh, arcade challenges and races before the finale? Just because. You know, because why not? Um, and also, you know, just to show you off my skills, <laughs> of course. Um, and also just to, you know, talk about some other stuff. Maybe about Spider-Man PS4. Maybe about this game in particular. Um, maybe about the movie. Just tons of stuff that might, you know, get on my mind. So if I ramble a lot during this episode, just understand that's why. You know? It's because of this game, and also just because, in general, I just love talking about anything on my mind. Um, especially doing challenges, where we have 12 challenges to get through, which is very intense. But we're gonna get through all of them. And of course, the winning suit is, of course, Superior Spider-Man, so... That is the best award. At least I think it is. It's very appropriate, too, since you are the Superior Spider-Man player to defeat all the arcade challenges, so you just get a suit for your goals. At least it's better than freaking Ultimate Spider-Man, where in Ultimate Spider-Man you had to uh, do everything in the game, specifically get all those stupid tokens in the city, and uh, yeah. All you got was the black suit in the end, even though if you are a person like me, who got all the tokens in the PS2 version of the game, or you know, Xbox, you know, the first Xbox, not Xbox One, but you know, the original Xbox, and, um, or GameCube, you know, whichever console that you have. Not one of you PC guys who got the costume by getting, like, you know, some, like, you know, mod or whatever to wear the black suit without getting all of the tokens. You cheater. Only a true Spider-Man player has the ability to get the entirety of the black suit by actually doing what it requires you to do in the game. By, you know, either doing the races, the combat tours, and, uh... You know, just going around the city and just doing all the city events. And beating Johnny Storm as well. Freaking Johnny Storm in the game was amazing. Uh, but yeah, I got the black suit in Ultimate Spider-Man on my PS2. Um, and I'm very, very happy that I did do that. And it just looks awesome being able to swing around in that game specifically in the black suit. Which is why when I was playing Shared Dimensions and that game looked as good as it did. And I could play as black suited Ultimate Spider-Man. It's like... It's like a second chance, you know, like, oh my god, I can wear the black suit after all. Because when I, you know, I came back, like, quite a couple years later to play Ultimate Spider-Man to get the black suit. And I did get it, but I got it, like, I think after Edge of Time came out. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, I know, like, I didn't get it when Shadow Dimensions came out. Shadow Dimensions came out in two, uh, 2010. Edge of Time came out in 2011. I definitely got the Ultimate Spider-Man black suit in Ultimate Spider-Man the game after Edge of Time came out. That is for a fact. Guys, come on. If you want to shoot me with guns, make it, you know, worthwhile, okay? Please. You can't even see me. I'm like a ninja with my noir suit on. Come on. Woo! Really? You want to say that to me in a dark alleyway? Come on, now. I would not want to meet either Black Suit Spider-Man or Spider-Man Noir in a dark alleyway. That would just be terrifying. Good old web shots, unless they don't work, which, sure, why not? Ba-bam! Web kicks. The only solution to any good bruising. Yes, that was awesome. Yeah, and as a reward, you get posters. Which, again, in my Radioactive Review, just as a little spoiler, I guess, or a, you know, a little insight to what Radioactive Review is going to be, um, definitely the best moment, because I think there is only one best moment of this game, is the comic stand. Or doing creepy challenges that are reminiscent of the past levels with Shocker. Hey, Shocker, where are you at, huh? You know? Uh, but yeah, you know, the best part of the comic stand is, of course, just being able to go in there, talk to Stan Lee, or, you know, he will talk to you, or he'll just say random dialogue, 
Um, you can look at the comics that you can actually collect from, you know, getting all the comic book pages in the city. Um, you can look at posters of concept art, which, by the way, uh, uh, the way that they made Felicia look in the concept art is whew, gorgeous. Uh, and also Carnage 2 looks... I don't even know if it is concept art. I know that they claim it to be, but seriously, the concept art that they had for Carnage looks super similar to uh, the Carnage from, you know, uh, what's it? The, the comic book called, like, Carnage USA. Like, you know, something like that, where you see, like, a comic book cover of, like, Carnage in the Uncle Sam outfit, and he has the hat on, he's, like, pointing at you. You know, like, Carnage USA or American Carnage, whatever it is, it's something like that. Um, and one of the concept art images of Carnage that they made for him looks super identical to that, so I don't know if that was just a coincidence, or if they just, you know, inspired their Carnage off of that comic book Carnage. Um, which might be the case, but I don't know for sure. Guys, come on, two for one knockout, you know, attacks, please. Use skills, or try and use strategy as well. Um, which is, again, what I really hope is going to happen for, uh, Spider-Man PS4's combat, and not glitches, you know, either. From that guy just flying up in the air, that would be very helpful. Um, you know, again, with what we saw with Spider-Man PS4, uh, what Brian Intar said is that he is an acrobatic improviser, so he is just, you know, doing what he needs to do to get the job done, which is what we saw with the special takedowns. He used some with his webs, he used kicks, he used, you know, lots of crazy flips, um, he just, and also used just standard punches and also other kicks, so he is going to be very acrobatic, very improvisational with this combat, and I'm very excited about that. It's definitely not going to be like this. Some of you guys say, oh, it looks like Arkham. This is Arkham. Guys, Spider-Man PS4 looks very improvisational, which again, even though I haven't played the game, of course, uh, what Insomniac Games have done with Sunset Overdrive, even though that game didn't have combat, it had gunplay. Uh, you know, like Uncharted, where you can shoot guns and everything, and Traversal, that was your main form of combat with the Traversal, and the methods of gunplay. Um, so that's how I can see what they're doing from that game and inputting it into, um, Spider-Man PS4. And what we've seen already, it, just, it, it looks great. And, uh, again, what they say, uh, you know, you gotta make sure that you're a skilled player in order to go fast when swinging, so I'm assuming that also goes to, um, you know, the combat. Because, again, the combat designer, or a combat designer, Adam Corleone talked about the game's combat, and he basically just said that the, the Spider-Man PS4's combat will require a lot of, you know, differentiation and variety and skill, you know, to also make sure that you mix and match up your moves. So, again, if you're gonna use the environment, you have a lot of environmental takedowns you can do. Um, you have the webs, you have the gadgets, you have spider sense, you know, which can slow down time, what it seems like, by dodging enemies. It doesn't look like there's a counter button yet, but what we've seen so far in the current demo, it looks like you can only dodge, not counter. This game, you counter, just like Arkham. Spider-Man PS4, it looks like you can only dodge. It doesn't look like you can counter at all, which is super reminiscent of Spider-Man 2. You know, the movie time game, Spider-Man 2. So I'm very excited about that. I think they're going to do a really interesting job with the combat, and I can't wait to play it. Um, you know, everything about it, but mainly the combat is what I'm very excited for. Again, swinging is swinging. Uh, that's really fun. Again, what they did with Sunset Overdrive looks awesome, but combat. Um, I want a really fun, unique way of combat. And again, what the heck, dude? I was fighting your friend, you just go and take a free hit on me? That's not cool. You jerk. Please. Try and do that again. I would love to see that happen. Come on, guys. We're all friends here. I think. I mean, I hope so. I mean, yeah, got a lot of gumption on me. Woo! Um, yeah, what else? Spider-Man PS4, Paris Games Week, da 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 news report for Paris Games Week. Hopefully this part comes out before Paris Games Week. Uh, I forget how to pronounce her last name. Isabel Kasu, H-S-U is how you spell her last name. I'm not sure if... I'm pronouncing it correctly, I know I'm not. Who, Hsu. Um, someone at, like, she just put a random tweet out saying, like, hey, is anyone going to BlizzCon? And then someone in the comment, you know, in on Twitter just responded to her, like, hey, uh, better question, uh, are you going to Paris Games Week with Spider-Man PS4? Um, and she just responded with a thinking emoji. So obviously it's like, we don't know if she's, you know, trolling us, or if she's like, she doesn't know what the question means, or it's like, oh, are we going? We don't know. So, um, I'm just very, you know, hoping extremely that we're gonna get something for Spider-Man PS4 Paris Games Week. She's teasing it. I believe her role is a, uh, I think she's like a creative director of some sort, or like an, um, like a assistant manager, or assistant director, assistant something, I believe, at Marvel Games, so, you know, hopefully she's just not trolling us like Ryan Panagos did with the whole 2017 release date. 
Um, hopefully we do actually get something of Paris Games Week. Again, what I would like to see, um, which again you can uh, look forward to in our Peter Parker collab. It's going to be very fun. Uh, hopefully we get some information about Peter. Hopefully we get to see Peter. I think that would be a really interesting, you know, trailer or piece of news to get in, like, seeing what Peter looks like, seeing if, you know, since they say Peter Parker gameplay is confirmed, so, like, what can we do? Are we going to do something really fun or something really lame? So, I, again, I don't think Insomniac is going to let us down at all, but hopefully we do, in fact, see what the, uh, different aspects of the gameplay are going to be for either Spider-Man or Peter Parker. Um, and kind of re to recap, um, what they did last year, because, again, Insomniac was, in fact, at Paris Games Week in 2015 when Ratchet and Clank PS4 was coming out, um, and they showed three things at Paris Games Week. And again, that's a PlayStation exclusive. I know Ratchet and Clank is not on the same level as Spider-Man in terms of popularity, but still, like, it was a Sony exclusive game which was showed off at Paris Games Week, so who knows? But mainly what they showed off, they showed two separate demos, one with Ratchet by himself, one with Clank with himself, and a story trailer, which was all great stuff. I think they were all less than like five minutes or something, but still, it's really great that they showed a lot of different things for Ratchet and Clank at the event at Paris Games Week in 2015, and uh, hopefully they can do the same thing here for Spider-Man PS4. You know, uh, what, what would be ideal, hopefully, some people are still confused about the story of the game. They don't really, you know, do a lot of research, it seems like, so they don't know, or at least some people may not know that Peter is a scientist. He's 23 years old. He's been Spider-Man for eight years, so they haven't really, you know, they say that uh, in the interviews and behind the scenes stuff, but they don't, you know, some people may not be interested in the interviews, um, so they might not know that information, so that is Insomniac's job to, you know, inform the player about that in the story of the game, like when the game is released, or in a trailer of the game when we do see a story trailer of it um, for Peter. Or, you know, maybe Miles and his involvement in the story. Maybe Yuri Watanabe. And again, who is the main villain? Because again, like we keep seeing, Mr. Negative is not the main villain. Some of you guys still think he is. He is not. And Sonic Games already confirmed he is not the main villain. He is just a villain in the game. Um, what we think could be the main villain is Norman Osborn is the mayor. What we see with his posters and everything. Like, oh, I'm running for mayor, guys. Um, you know, re-elect Osborn for mayor is what the billboard says. So, you know, maybe he is the main villain. Maybe he's not. Who knows? But since they keep showing it, you know, they showed it in the uh, 2016 trailer and they showed it in the um, demo, you know, so hopefully we do get, in fact, some explanation on what Norman's role is. Is he the main, is he the main bad guy? Is he just an Easter egg? I don't think he is. Um, that really just seems like it is referencing to something very important in the story. Um, and I do think he's going to be the main villain, and I can't wait to see what type of villainous stuff he's going to do. Um, and, like, what type of goblin he's going to be as well. Is he going to be the, um, you know, the, uh, green goblin on the glider, like this goblin in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, or the ultimate goblin where he is, like, a Hulk monster? Um, so who knows? Um, what else? Upcoming games that I'm excited for. You know, just, again, since I'm rambling a lot, I should just probably tell you guys what else I'm excited for. So, again, Paris Games Week, this isn't just for Spider-Man. This is for everything. So, games in general. So, hopefully... We get to see what Sucker Punch is working on. I want to see really, really insanely what the heck Sucker Punch is working on. Because, again, we thought they were going to make Spider-Man, but they're not. They're working on something else. Uh, what the rumors are saying to be, it is a new IP, which means it's, it's a new game. Um, it's not like Sly Cooper 4 or anything, even though I would love a Sly Cooper 4. Um, or a 5, actually, because we already have had Sly Cooper 4. Um, you know, uh, is it a Western game? Because there were rumors or something that they were making Western games. Uh, but I think they they debunked that, so I don't think it is going to be a Western game. Plus, that would be very similar to Red Dead Redemption. So it's like, you know, that wouldn't make a lot of sense. Um, you know, hopefully it is a superhero game. You know, I would love to see what type of superhero game Sucker Punch could make. Is it like a, you know, Marvel game or an Iron Man game? Or maybe it's not. Maybe it is a DC game. I don't know. But I think they could do a really, really good Iron Man game if they wanted to. Um, and I think that with the team that they have, who made Infamous, um, they would make, like, a perfect match, I think, for Iron Man. Um, come on, guys, I want to try and take out your friend, not you guys. At least not yet, okay? Psych! Again, this combat is very bad. <laughs> it's very, very bad. The first game's combat was so much more fun. This game's combat is so repetitive. It's so slow. It's janky. The counters, again, it's just like Arkham, except it's way less exciting and... Very much slower than that of anything else that we've seen from the other Spider-Man games. Uh, Spider-Man 2, you know, the movie time game, you know, Toby's Spider-Man 2, was fast-paced. It had the dodge ability with the spider sense. Um, you know, you could parry a lot of attacks, and you also had... Ouch! Wow, I got hit twice. 
that sucks. Um, you had the ability to, you know, um, dodge roll out of the way. You could use your environment, like, with hanging people up on lampposts. You could hang them upside down, which is awesome. Um, you know, just tons of other stuff. Uh, with the, uh, spider reflexes to slow down time. And they also tried to do that as well in Spider-Man 3, but they broke more physics in that game. Okay, I tried to spam me with webs, and that didn't work. And, oh wow, I thought I got hit for a second, that scared me. Um, you know, with Spider-Man 3, I still love the game and that, com uh, the combat in that game. Um, but Spider-Man 2's combat, I think, was better. Um, but yeah, you still had the spider reflexes in that game. You had special attacks, which was the difference between Spider-Man 3 and Spider-Man 2, is that you had special attacks. Um in the black suit and the red suit, so it offered a lot of differentiation from the, you know, the two suits. Um, let's see, uh, you had, you know, dodge counter attack parries, like, you know, like, oh, I did a counter move, I can re-counter that with a, with another move to, like, even make my, you know, my counter attack more damaging in Spider-Man 2. In Spider-Man 3, you had, like, the same thing, but it wasn't as effective. Um, and it was more fun to do in Spider-Man 2 as well. So bam, nice. Only got hit three times. That sucks. I thought I could do it without getting hit once, but sucks. I'll try to get not hit during the other parts. Um, Web of Shadows. Again, the Spider-Man game is my personal favorite and I think has the best combat in any Spider-Man game. Hands down, Web of Shadows has the best combat in any Spider-Man game. Air attacks, wall attacks, special attacks, black suit, red suit, tendrils. Um, or black suit, tendrils, red suit, webs, you know. Uh, you're faster in the red suit, you're more damaging in the black suit. Same thing with Spider-Man 3. Um, I love that game so much. Um, you know, what else? Uh, Edge of Time, Shadow Dimensions, you know, yeah, each dimension had a different uh, moveset, so... 2099, you were fast. Amazing Spider-Man focused on web combat. Um, Noir was all about stealth and bare-knuckle brawling, which is the, the combat that uh, Insomniac looks like they're taking for Spider-Man PS4, is the bare-knuckle brawling status of combat. Um, and, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, again, just tendrils, which is awesome, with the rage mode. Um, what, uh, Edge of Time, you know, you had more, um, attacks with your dodge move that made you faster and more invincible, and 2099, you had a decoy to deploy to kind of trick enemies, um, to kind of give you a strategic edge. Uh, not that, you know, not that different, though, from 2099 from Shadow Dimensions, but still interesting. And Amazing Spider-Man games was just Arkham Combat, and for Ultimate Spider-Man, it's really hard to describe Ultimate Spider-Man. You could use, you know, you just had square to punch, triangle to kick, circle to grab, L2 to use webs, and you could mix up certain attacks with your webs, which is interesting. Um, and you could also, you know, use walls and jump off of dumpsters and alleyway walls to kind of attack enemies with more damage, which was really interesting. Um, Spider-Man PS4 looks to do the same thing. You know, we haven't seen the full extension of the combat yet, but what we are seeing so far looks like a hybrid of Spider-Man 2, Ultimate Spider-Man, and a little bit of the Arkham games, because even Insomnia games themselves have said, oh yeah, we're looking at everything, we're looking at the past Spider-Man games, and we're also looking at the Arkham games as well. So they themselves admitted that they are looking at the Arkham games. It doesn't mean that they are ripping off the Arkham games, but they're just looking at what they did, and they're seeing how they can improve upon it. Um, and yeah, with gadgets, that can offer a really different thing from what we've seen from the other Spider-Man games. Uh, again, that's what I just said with Arkham. They're looking at Arkham, so that has to go with the gadgets. So maybe if you're fighting guys with guns, maybe you'll ne really need to use the uh, web trip mine to uh, attack some guys. Or maybe you'll need the impact webbing more to wrap them up so that way they won't try and shoot you with their guns. Um, you know, that'd be a really strategic way of fighting. Um, that would offer a lot of, you know, player variety, you know, seeing different players play the game. You could either use standard punches, or you could use web shots, you know, who knows. Um, this game's combat, like, again, the difference between this game's combat and the Amazing Spider-Man 1's combat is it's so much slower. This is such a slow differentiation from the first game. The first game, if you build up your combo, you go faster and you pull off more acrobatic moves. This game, the animations are repeated constantly. Um, the web pull and web strikes are the main, you know, uses of the combat, and they, they're not fun. And they're not useful either. Um, and again, you have the... Uh, the new ability to time your strikes like what you're seeing right now. Focus on my combo meter. I go up like two combos each time I hit someone. Look, 20. It just went from 18 to 20. You see that? So that is what I mean by timing your strikes. So that way they, you know, build up your combo more, you earn more experience, and you do more damage. That's what the difference is between this game's combat and the Amazing Spider-Man 1's combat. However, I still prefer the first game's combat. Even though the first game's combat is button mashing, it was more fun. That's the difference. This game, I'm literally almost about to fall asleep. If I were not commentating right now, 
I would pretty much be falling asleep from doing this combat, just the combat alone. Um, and again, like Godzilla Mendoza showed, all you have to do pretty much is just spam square and triangle to, in fact, do the combat. If you just want to get the combat done, if you do want to, you know, build up your combos and build up a nice, you know, combo streak and uh, gain more experience when fighting enemies, then yeah, like, you see that 69, 71, you see that? So that's what I mean by timing your strikes. Um, and you know, again, like right here, it's the same pattern every time for each enemy except for the heavy enemies. All you have to do is web shoot the enemies so that way they're wrapped up in webs completely and then press circle. You know, punch them three times after they're webbed up in a web cocoon, and then press circle, and then you'll do a finishing move, and then that's it. Look at all the guys that are in webs, you see? Um, and the one thing I really don't like about this game's combat, and the Amazing Spider-Man's combat overall, is that there's a lack of webs, which is also kind of what I'm seeing so far with Amazing uh, with Spider-Man PS4, is that it looks like um, the combat looks fun, but I want there to be more use of his webs. Like, you know, he's just fighting with his fists and his feet, which is all good, but I really hope that there's going to be, you know, the ability to use some webs. I want to web shoot some enemies. I want to, what we saw where he, you know, he kicks him up in the air and he slams him down with the webs. That was awesome. So I want more of that, you know? I'm sure there will be. I just hope that there is more of that because that's my favorite part about, um, um, I would say Web of Shadows because you always used your webs with the web strike. You could go from one enemy, web them, web yourself towards them, bounce off of them, web yourself towards another enemy and then kick off of them to another enemy. I love that combat so much. And you could do like a bounce off them, you could slam them down on the ground, you, you could throw them, and I love that combat. Even though it may not make any sense physics wise, um, it's still fun as hell. That's the best part about Web of Shadows, is the combat. Um, and yeah, I really think Spider-Man PS4 is doing a great job so far. Um, what, the, what, you know, what they've done with uh, Sunset Overdrive and um, Ratchet and Clank, I think they're doing really good job so far. Um, what else? Uh, Sucker Punch, we talked about that, Spider-Man Games, we talked about that. Movies, I guess, why not? Let's talk about movies. Justice League and uh, Thor Ragnarok are the most, you know, the two upcoming um, superhero movies that are coming out soon. Uh, I really want to see Thor Ragnarok and Justice League. However, I'm very worried about Justice League. I, it looks really not that good, I'm sorry, but if you guys are actually psyched for Justice League, more power to you. But... Every character, Mera, Flash, Aquaman, Cyborg, especially Cyborg, looks so CGI. They look covered in CGI, and I'm really not looking forward to it. Um, and the one thing I am looking forward to is, to Justice League is Henry Cavill as Superman, because I love Henry Cavill as Superman. I think he's awesome. He made me love Superman. You know, uh, Man of Steel, actually, I love Man of Steel. Um, and it's mainly because of Henry Cavill as Superman. And I really think he does a great job as playing Clark Kent uh, and Superman. Um, Flash, I'm really not sold on Ezra Miller as, as Flash. Ezra Miller, um, he's funny, he's a nice guy, but I don't see him as the Flash. And again, this is the problem with DC going straight into Justice League. Like, we have a solo... Um, Superman movie. We basically have Man of Steel one and a half, which was Batman v Superman, um, which was half of the Batman movie and half of the Superman movie. Um, I basically call it Man of Steel two because it basically is Man of Steel two. Um, even though you're you are seeing the movie from Batman's perspective, still it's it's pretty much Man of Steel two um, and Wonder Woman, which was fine. Um, you know, and that's why like oh, so we're gonna have Aquaman, Flash. And Cyborg. But not a lot of people know about Cyborg. Um, they know him from the Teen Titans, but they never really know about his origin. Um, and that's why the tease is in Batman vs. Superman with all the, um, you know, the emails, whatever, that Wonder Woman sent uh, Batman, you know, with the, the emails like, oh, hey, here's these super people, or, you know, the uh, emails that Lex Luthor had, I should say. Uh, or, you know, whatever it was, you know, the files where they showed the video clips of all the Justice League members. That was pathetic. Seeing the very the very first time seeing Justice League on film, at least from what you know my recollection is of seeing the Justice League on film. I don't know if we've had a Justice League movie in the past before. Um, but, you know, seeing the main Justice League for this DCEU, I should say, be shown off in video files is really sad. It's really sad, and um, you know we just saw Ezra Miller's flash for like two seconds. And yeah, he's like a jokester, you know, he's funny, funny, he likes Rick and Morty, right guys? So I like Rick and Morty, so that means I'm hip to the hip-hop, right guys? I'm trendy, 
I love Szechuan Sosh. No, it's like, come on, man. At least with the Flash TV show, they really dwell in the uh, Barry's backstory. Grant Gustin, I think, really does a great job as Flash. Um, this just seems bad. Um, and especially the CGI effects for Flash look awful. He looks so fake. Um, really, really bad. Um, if that's like the final product, I'm not looking forward to this movie. Uh, whatsoever. And, uh, final blow, and... Justin Woo! Ray that was Green. close. That was actually super close. I almost always fail that part. Hey, Good thing I didn't. Really yes! So pretty. No, come on, you can't hit me that easily. And he almost did, but still, don't. I'd rather, I'd rather have myself not be slammed to the ground by this giant sumo wrestling guy. Whoa! No thanks. We got bullets, bats, and a fat guy. Good mix. Whoa. Woo! Guys, if you want to have a small party, we could just talk this out, okay? Chips and dips are in the back. Cookies are in the front. And spider punches are right here. Also, I don't know how I got shot. That's messed up. Your own tricks. They say everyone's the hero of his own story. Eh, but come on. I'm the hero of this one. Yes, you are, Spider-Man. Good dialogue. I'm just kidding. Um, you know, you guys did say... Stick around over there. The point I brought up, it, guys, come on, stop trying to hit me while I'm hitting your guys. Uh, and that's a flaw of this game as well. Like, oh, I'm performing a signature move that I can't exit out of, so we're gonna have a thug hit you, and you can't block his attack or you know evade his attack. So it's like that's kind of like not pointless, but it's kind of like not that good game design. Um. What was I gonna say? Uh, Justice League, you know, whatever. Thor Ragnarok looks really cool. Um, see, like, right there, I was trying to do a special attack and I just got grabbed. Like, what the heck? Um, yeah, take a nap, okay? I'm trying to take out your friends first and then I'll take you out. Woo! Rejected! And double rejected. Oh, wait, no, almost. Woo! No, wow, that was close. Um, uh, what I was gonna say, fellow Spidey Squad member Vigilante Spider saw Thor Ragnarok and he loved it and from what I've seen so far I'm really excited for it um you know I'm really excited for Justice League too because you know I really want to see more Ben Affleck's Batman and Henry Cavill's Superman I you know hate me the dislikes are coming I can sense it I don't like Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman and not because of her bus size or whatever they're not big enough no it's because of her um accent she has a very thick Israeli accent not that that's anything on her end you know but you know, Diana Prince doesn't really have an accent, at least from what I'm, you know, from the comics, and also the uh, Justice League uh, t anime cartoons. Um, that animated voice actress for um, Wonder Woman is, is the Wonder Woman for me. Um, same thing how I hear, um, if not Tara Strong, uh, even though she does an okay Harley Quinn, what's her name? The, the, the Harley Quinn voice actress from the Batman animated series. I think her name is Arlene Sorkin. That's Harley Quinn. Tara Strong's fine, but no, Arlene Sorkin for me is Harley Quinn. She is the best Harley Quinn voice ever. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, with uh, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, it's very odd. You know, she comes from Themyscira. It's this, you know, distant island, so it's fine if she has an accent coming from there. It's fine. Um, but I don't know. You know, like, Diana Prince herself is a very sophisticated woman. Um, it doesn't matter if she has a uh, accent or not, but just for me personally, I don't, I don't really care for it. Um, it's fine, you know, whatever. And uh, same thing, like the Marvel formula for the Marvel Cinematic Universe is like whatever you guys might say. Um, do come on, quit grabbing me. You might say it's been overdone and overused. Uh, whatever, it works. That's the main thing is that it in fact works for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You have a series of movies. That makes sense. You get to, uh, you know, see the backstories behind all these characters. You know what their story is. You know what they're from. You know what they've dealt with in the past. And then you can see the movies where they team up with each other. Or in, in Civil War's case, they fought against each other. And it makes sense. <coughs> wow. Sorry, guys. Talking for a long time really hurts my throat. Um, you know, um, and, you know, that's why I love Civil War. Civil War is, like, in my top five list of Marvel Cinematic Universe films. Um... And, uh, what's the, uh, you know, with what they're doing with Justice League? Like, okay, so DC has had a Man of Steel movie, a Wonder Woman movie, a Batman and Superman movie featuring Wonder Woman, which is basically Man of Steel 2, and, um, 
Suicide Squad, which was flat out horrible. Um, and I'm not even going to count Suicide Squad because it doesn't even seem like that they're going to bring it up in uh, Justice League. At least from what I've seen, it doesn't look like they're going to bring it up in Justice League. Um, and you know, this whole thing with uh, Civil War and um, Avengers introducing Thanos, you know, at least it's like, oh, you have this weird purple monster guy. And, you know, it's like, wow, no one knows about who Thanos is, and also the, uh, the Dark Order, or, you know, the children of Thanos, um, that they're gonna show in, in Infinity War. Um, at least that's what the Guardians of the Galaxy is for, to show this, you know, super spacey side of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, and show what it's all about. Um, this, though, with, uh, oh, we got Darkseid and Stefan Wolf, and it's like, you know... The only thing that we've had hinted towards uh, to Darkseid in the DCEU is the nightmare sequence head. with Batman where he sees the parademons the and he's shooting everyone with a gun. Um, that was it. And I guess a little bit in Wonder Woman, but not that much. Uh, we saw Ares... What the heck is with the camera? What just happened? Um, we saw with Ares and Wonder Woman um, talking in the, the dream... Not even... Oh, I don't know what it was. It, it wasn't a dream sequence. It was uh, like a mind thing where Ares was messing with Diana and he was trying to convert her to the evil side so that way she would turn against humanity and fight them for him, you know, like to be her side, be his pawn, you know, pretty much. Um, at least with that, you know, they kind of went into a background with Wonder Woman and why she's fighting for uh, justice and why, you know, what she said in Batman vs. Superman, like, oh, I fought monsters from other planets before, whatever. Um, she was talking about Ares, or gods, or whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we had that introduction to Thanos in Guardians of the Galaxy 1, and, uh, I think Guardians of the Galaxy 2, please don't hate me. It's not because I don't want to see it, but it's because I've been super busy. I haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, but I've been so busy with the Spy Squad stuff, and go. just with life in general, that I haven't Maybe been one. able to see, uh, you know, <clears throat> um... What's it? Um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I'm sure it's great, though. People say it's better than the first one. I'm sure it is. I mean, you got Kurt Russell as a, as a freaking living planet, so it's, you can't go wrong with Kurt Russell. Um, what, uh, you know, with uh, uh, Thanos being the Mad Titan and having the Infinity Gauntlet, at least there, we know what's happening. And um, Guardians of the Galaxy, they, they made that very clear. He's the father of uh, Gamora and Nebula. Um, and, you know, we kind of get that backstory of Gamora and see what's going on there. Um, and, you know, but with Stefan Wolf, like, who the heck is Stefan Wolf? I don't know anything about Stefan Wolf. I don't know. I know a little bit about Darkseid, but I've never known anything about Stefan Wolf. Uh, what they're saying is that he's the uncle of Darkseid, which sounds so lame. Oh, oh, my uncle is gonna go and fight the Justice League. Okay, my nephew's gonna come and beat your butts now, or is Darkseid the nephew, or is. Is Stephen Wolf? I don't know, guys. Okay, all I know is he looks like he's a really dumb-looking alien with an axe and really, really bad CGI. I think the worst CGI is uh, Cyborg. Cyborg looks the worst out of all the Justice League because he's mainly metal and with like half of a human face. So that's why he looks so bad. Um, I'm not really looking at his design though. I don't really like it that much. Um, I know, it's like, how else can they do it, though, Evan? How else can they make Cyborg look like a Cyborg? I don't know, but it just, from what we've seen, Ray Fisher seems to be doing a good job as Victor Stone, um, but I, I, I don't know. I hope he does good. Um, but that whole thing with, my man, uh, it's like, uh, they're trying too hard to be funny. At least with Ragnarok, you know, um, I have that problem, too, though. If anyone remembers the, uh, Ragnarok font from where Kevin Feige was listing all the Phase 3 Marvel movies, you know, they debuted Thor Ragnarok, and it looked like, it looked like Thor was gonna be in hell, you know, like, it looked like a really intense movie. Um, <clears throat> with Ragnarok, now it looks like some 80s, you know, sci-fi, 90s, like, whatever, like, you know, retro, you know, thing, and, like, everyone's saying, oh, it's so fun, and, you know, that's the main thing that everyone says about every Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, it's a really fun time, it's super fun. Um, I didn't really get that with Civil War. Civil War wasn't fun for me. It was like an epic action blockbuster, um, with really high intense stakes. Um, <clears throat> what else? Uh, Ant-Man. Ant-Man was very, it was funny, but then that really was messed up though, where, um, Yellow Jacket was about to, uh, kill Ant-Man's daughter, uh, l uh, why am I blanking on Scott Lang's daughter? Uh, it's not Laura. Um, I'm sorry, I forget Scott Lang's daughter's name, but you know, her name, Cassie, right? Cassie Lang, pretty sure. She was so sweet, and she was such a sweetheart, and then, um, Darren Cross comes in and tries to kill her. It's like, wow, that's really, 
messed up, which is why I love Ant-Man so much. And also the really emotional scenes between um, Michael Douglas and Evangeline Lilly. Which, by the way, Evangeline Lil Lilly just... Oh my god, please. I don't know who's prettier, Emma Stone or Evangeline... I can't. And the, the set photos that we're seeing so far of Ant-Man and the Wasp, I am so hyped for Ant-Man and the Wasp. You guys have no idea. Ant-Man was like one of my favorite movies in 2015 from Marvel, because the other one that we had was... Uh, Age of Ultron, and I really liked Age of Ultron. I'm one of the few who likes Age of Ultron more than the first Avengers. I cu because James Spader really kicked ass as Ultron. And uh, the behind the scenes said that uh, when he first, you know, did his Ultron, impre you know, his acting as Ultron, he was in full mocap. Like, he was in a motion capture suit, and he was acting out as Ultron. He was awesome in it, and I really did like his uh, take on Ultron. And especially, like, you know, he, you, you guys say, like, oh, he was too funny. He's supposed to be a soulless uh, robot, and that's because in the comics, um, Ultron was made by Hank Pym. In the movies, it was made by Tony Stark, which I think, in my opinion, makes way more sense that Ultron would be made by Tony Stark. He already seems like an Iron Man villain anyways, and it makes way more sense that, you know, given what Tony Stark's um, personality is, what, you know, what Robert Downey Jr. brings to the table is Tony Stark and how he implemented that into Jarvis's AI, pretty much, and, you know, seeing that same thing happen with Ultron, and it's like, yeah, I think he really did a great job, and, uh, easily, I love Loki, but, um, I think I prefer Ultron over Loki, and, uh, you know, same thing with Elizabeth Ol Olsen as Scarlet Witch, she was awesome as Scarlet Witch, and also, she, she does the same thing with, Marvel knows how to cast beautiful women in roles, <laughs> Scar um, uh, uh, Elizabeth Olsen is Scarlet Witch. I don't know why I just blanked on her name. Elizabeth Olsen is Scarlet Witch. Evangeline Lilly is Wasp. Black Widow, uh, Scarlet Johansson is Black Widow. Oh my god. Um, and, uh, I guess, you know, Rachel McAdams as, what's her name from, uh, Doctor Strange. Um, and also Tilda Swinton. And also, oh my god, Kate Blanchett as Hella. Wow. Wow, she looks like she's 20 years old as Hella. Like, she looks amazing, and it's fantastic. I'm not saying that to sound creepy, you know. I hope I'm not sounding creepy. I'm just actually saying, like, wow, more, like, they really know how to cast well-talented actors in these roles. And it's fun because they actually love doing them, you know, that these actors like doing these roles. Scarlett Johansson likes playing as Black Widow. Um, you know, uh, Chris Evans really likes playing Captain America. Um... Iron, you know, Robert Downey Jr. Wait, saying, like, I might do an Iron Man 4, I might not do an Iron Man 4, who knows? But he really does like playing as Iron Man. He even said, like, you know, he loves Spider-Man, and the fact that he was being able to be featured in a Spider-Man movie was super amazing for him. Like, he wasn't trying to see, like, oh, it's another Iron Man movie. No, he saw it, like, in Spider-Man Homecoming. He's like, oh, we're going to have a Spider-Man movie in the MCU, and we're going to have Iron Man in this movie. And they asked, like, Robert J. J uh, you know, RDJ, like, hey, do you want to be Iron Man in Spider-Man Homecoming? He's like, yeah, sure, I'd be honored. He's like, that's awesome. He loves Spider-Man. He loves doing Iron Man as a character. And I, you know, again, like, Iron Man... Uh, four is what people call Homecoming. It's like, yeah, I get it. But again, we've had uh, five Spider-Man movies by himself. So, you know, I like the change uh, with Homecoming with Iron Man. It. What I didn't like is that um, uh, Peter was basically Iron Man's guinea pig, you know? Like, he was basically like, you know, like, oh, my God, Mr. Stark. <clears throat> and like, oh, my God, Mr. Stark. Are you like, I want this suit, Mr. Stark. I got to impress Mr. Stark, which again, I reviewed Homecoming, so you can go check it out for yourself. Um, that whole this. scene pissed me off, uh, where the rubble scene, that scene was gorgeous, though, where Tom Holland was actually screaming, like, help, help, and then he's like, come on, Spider-Man, that was great, but then he's like, oh, I might die, what am I gonna think about as I'm dying? Huh, maybe Tony Stark's words to me saying, I'm nothing without, if you're nothing without this suit, you shouldn't have it, not, you know, what Aunt May said, or what Uncle Ben said, no, just... Iron Man, talk to me. That was stupid, in my opinion. I really didn't like that scene. Um, that scene would have offered a lot of background to, um, you know, uh, Tom Holland, Spider-Man, and also Uncle Ben. Like, did he die by a mugger? Or did he die in the Chitauri invasion, you know? I don't know. So, whatever happens, I wish that they, you know, talk about that more in the future. Sorry, I'm having the hiccups right now. I don't know why. Um... And, you know, I just really hope that they showcase that more in uh, Infinity War, hopefully. Um, and also, uh, you know, Homecoming 2, whenever that comes out. And please, for love of God, we need Mysterio in Homecoming 2. I don't care. It's been overdue. We were gonna get freaking Mysterio in Spider-Man 4 with Bruce Campbell possibly being Quentin Beck. Um, which would have been amazing. 
Um, but no, we, it's time we get Mysterio. Even in, either in Spider-Man PS4 yes, or awesome. Spider-Man Homecoming 2, we need Mysterio as a villain to fight again. It's time. Um, you know, what else? Um, you know, I just really want Justice League to do good. I haven't seen Suicide Squad, so if you're hating on me for not seeing Gurren's The Galaxy Volume 2, I haven't seen Suicide Squad, so don't worry. Um, and I, that was the choice. Like, do you want, like, I had, on my dad's birthday, him and I were just hanging out, and we were seeing, like, oh, what do you want to see? You want to see Wonder Woman or uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? And my dad, uh, think, like, thinks Gal Gadot's pretty, uh, so he went, he wanted to see um, <laughs> uh, Wonder Woman with me. So we saw Wonder Woman together, and I really, really liked it. I liked it a lot. Uh, Chris Pine did a good job as Steve Trevor. Um, Gal Gadot, you know, was fine as Wonder Woman. And, uh... Uh, I forget his name all the time, but the guy is Ares. I don't care what you guys say. He was... Uh, I was not expecting that, uh, uh, him to turn into Ares. I thought it was, like, super, like, sick. Like, whoa, he was Ares? And he looked awesome, too, in the, uh, full Ares costume. Because the, the trailers, you know, they were showing the, uh... The, the, the German, you know, colonel guy to be, uh, the main villain. Or Dr. Poison, you know, the, the girl with the mask. And I was like, oh, so she's gonna be the main villain. Okay, but no, it was Ares the whole time. I'm like, oh, snap, that's awesome. Um, and I was really, I was not expecting, you know, um, that guy to be Ares. You know, whatever his name is from Harry Potter, who's the werewolf. You know, that guy? I love that guy. Um, and I also saw Doctor Strange, you know, even though that came out, uh, last year in 2016. I really liked Doctor Strange. Bandit Cumberbatch was awesome in it. Uh, Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One was great. And, of course, Mads Mikkelsen as Caecilius was great. Um, yeah, now I want to talk about the thing that we are trying to talk about in the Spidey Squad's YouTube channel. Again, uh, the Spidey Squad has a YouTube channel. If you want to go and subscribe to it, it will be in the description. Same thing with you guys not really understanding. Yes, the Spidey Squad Discord server is back and online. You can go and check it out and join back. We just had to, you know, revise it and remodel it and kind of set up some ground rules because it was getting a little out of hand when we first set it up. But it's all fine now. It's totally back to normal. So you guys can go and go back in our Discord server and also try and talk to us. Whenever you want to, usually there's always someone on there, so it's going to be a really fun time, and hopefully I can get to go on there. I'm always on there, either doing collabs, or if I'm not busy, uh, I can try and talk to you guys or the other Spidey Squad members, so it's really fun. But what I want to talk about, and what the Spidey Squad and I are going to talk about on the YouTube channel, is the Venom movie! The Venom movie is happening! If you guys didn't see on Twitter, um, Tom Hardy is, uh, you know, actually playing Venom, Eddie Brock, which is freaking phenomenal, and, uh... They showed on the official Venom movie Twitter account that it's happening. It started day one of production, I think. I don't think they said of shooting, uh, but I think day one of production. So that's really exciting. It said to come out October 2018, so hopefully they don't get pushed back or anything. Um, I don't care what anyone says. I'm hyped. I'm actually super hyped for Tom Hardy to become Venom. Um, and you could say, like, you know, um, you know, the movie might be bad because it's this whole weird thing with Sony, which I do agree with. However, I know the movie might be bad. I know the story might be bad. I know that the CGI might be bad. The one saving grace of it that I'm excited for, I'm not saying you have to be excited for it, I'm saying this is what I'm excited for, is in fact Tom Hardy playing Venom, my favorite Spider-Man villain of all time. And you got freaking Bane playing Venom. Holy Christ, I'm so excited. You have no idea how hyped I am for Tom Hardy to be Venom. He did a great job in Inception. He was awesome in, uh, what is it, um, Dunkirk. I saw that. It was awesome as Dunkirk. Or, he was awesome in Dunkirk. And, um, what's this movie? There's this one movie with Tom Hardy, which you have to see if before you see Venom. Um, he plays, like, these two, I think it's called Legends or something. He plays these two twin brothers. You know how, um, Army Hammer played the, uh, the, uh, the Facebook brothers, the, uh, the, the, the something twins, you know, like the, uh, Frick, I love Social Network too, and I, I can't remember the name of the, uh, the twins. The, the W's, right? It starts with a W, I think. I don't know, but though, you know how Army Hammer played two of himself? So, it's the same thing in that movie, Tom Hardy plays two of himself. So one, Tom Hardy is like all nice and sophisticated, the other one's like a psychopath. And it's like, just blend those two performances in together and you get Eddie Brock. And it's so awesome. That movie like takes place in London, I think, so he has like a British accent. Um, I think Tom Hardy is naturally British, I'm pretty sure, or something like that. Or maybe Australian, I forget, because um, he also was in Mad Max. Um, and I think he was awesome as Mad Max. Um, and my dad loves Mad Max, and uh, yeah, I think he did awesome as... 
that character in that movie, and we love Fury Road. Fury Road was sick. Um, so I need to see Tom Hardy as Eddie. I don't care if Venom looks bad, even though I will be upset if he does look how Topher Grace has Venom look. Uh, you know, really small. Um, here's what I'm thinking. I think Topher Grace's Venom was a perfect carnage design, if that makes sense. I think all they had to do is turn him red instead of black, and they would have had the best carnage design ever. Um, but no, we got him as Venom and Eddie as well, and, uh, yeah, you know, obviously that Eddie is not really good. Um, it's not my preferred Eddie. Um, and again, the weird thing, there's not gonna be any Spider-Man in this Venom movie, so that's obviously the weird thing about it, but still, I just really, really can't wait to see Tom Hardy play Venom. Like, the same thing, like, Ben Affleck playing Batman. At first, I was like, oh, that's kind of strange. Uh, I wasn't like, oh, what, Ben Affleck? Ew, that's stupid. He sucks. And I was like, Ben Affleck is Batman? Huh. I gotta think about that for a second. I wasn't hating on him. I was just like, huh, that's interesting. This, though, I'm like, oh my god, I need this movie now, please. Again, even though there might be She-Venom and multiple other Venoms, I just need to see Tom Hardy play as Venom. I'm really interested to see what the other Spidey Squad members are gonna say about this. I haven't really talked to them about this yet. Uh, we're planning to do a video about it, so don't worry, but I'm, I haven't learned what their thoughts are on it yet, but wow. I need to see him now as... Venom, or Eddie Brock, you know, and what really excites me is that, uh, the production company, or, you know, the people making the Venom movie said that it's going to be a motion capture experience, so, like, obviously, like, how else can you make Venom without motion capture or CGI, you know, at least the CGI, I hope, won't look as bad as freaking uh, Homecomings, because, again, I, you know, Homecoming was fine, you know, I go back and forth, like, do I really like it? Tom Holland as Spider-Man, of course, was great. Michael Keaton as Vulture, for me, was the best part of the movie. Um, I didn't like how, though, he was basically sucking up to Iron Man the whole time, and the soundtrack was garbage. That soundtrack was awful in Homecoming. Even the classic Spider-Man theme, the da na 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 It was bad. I'm sorry, it was lazy. It was a bad orchestral version of the, you know, the old-school 60s theme, and I didn't like it. Again, check out uh, Super Mike. He reviews Homecoming totally in depth, and everything he says about the movie, I agree with. I really think that this movie was not that good. You know, I like parts of it. Again, Michael Keaton was the best part of it. He looked great as Vulture. He was awesome. He was the best part of the movie. Hands down, the best part of the movie. Um, even the scenes with um, Spider-Man, he's chasing after the van uh, to chase Shocker and uh, Donald Glover. Or, uh, you know, well, I guess just the Shockers. Um, the CGI when he's running on the rooftop was awful. Why didn't they just have him run on the rooftop? Why'd they have to CGI him running? I don't understand. And then they showed, um, like a behind the scenes footage clip of them going behind the scenes trying to craft a homemade suit and just the normal suit overall for the CGI. And in the behind the scenes video, it looks much better. But then the final product, it looks bad, so I don't understand what happened. Um, and the lighting too, it was always in the nighttime, at least it looked like for the homemade suit, it was in the nighttime where he fought the Shocker on the bus, and he fought Vulture in the air. It was in nighttime, the only time he wore the, uh, you know, homecoming suit in the day was during the, uh, Washington Monument scene, and, um, the warehouse scene, and that was it, I think. Oh, and the fairy scene, as well. Um... I don't know, it was fine, you know? I I, th I thought, just because the rubble scene, it was my second favorite Spider-Man movie of all time, but then I look back at it, and I'm like, wait a minute, the soundtrack was garbage, the CGI was not that good, um, and, uh, you know, at least Vulture was the best looking part, and best part of the movie, Michael Keaton as Vulture never let me down, Michael Keaton's fantastic. That was the main thing I was looking forward to when I was seeing the movie anyways, was Michael Keaton as Vulture, and he totally delivered, I think he did a great job, um, but yeah, again, uh, Super Mike says it perfectly, and I agree with a lot of the stuff he says. Um, and yeah, I don't know, I just really, really think they, you know, kind of... And again, with the whole, uh, the phone thing, too, you know, with Spider-Man's always on his phone. Um, he has the gadgets all the time, super tech-based. Again, that's never happened in the Spider-Man movie, I understand, but still, I think it was a bit too much. He relied too much on the suit, whereas at least in the, the uh, Civil War, he's like, oh... Uh, thanks for the new suit, it's great, you know, like, he never said, oh my god, oh, this suit's amazing, oh my god, I would be nothing without this suit, he's like, oh, thanks for the suit, Stark, and that's the thing, in, um, Civil War, even though he said Mr. Stark, he said, like, he was his equal, not like he was trying to suck up to Iron Man, like, hey, I'm trying to be like Iron Man, oh my god, 
And I understand, like, because he was uh, the kid in Iron Man 2 where he, um, you know, he, uh, what? He saw Iron Man in the, the Stark Expo in Iron Man 2 and uh, Iron Man saved Peter as a kid. You know, that, that makes sense to me. I understand, but still, like, I wish they made Spider-Man more independent and less, you know, kind of relying on <coughs> Iron Man and his armor. Um, or his, you know, his suit, his high-tech suit. Um, but I still like the movie. Again, it's not terrible. I love it. I actually really, really like it. Um, I would say I love it, but I'm just kind of disappointed in some aspects of it. Um, which is, again, why is why I'm so excited for Spider-Man PS4, because I know Spider-Man PS4 is going to deliver on all fronts. It's going to deliver on a great story. It's going to deliver on great visuals. It's going to deliver on a great soundtrack and going to deliver on a really, really kick-ass experience overall. Um... And uh, just the passion that's going behind this game excites me so much. And again, since this is not Spider-Man in high school, again, that's why I love uh, Toby Spider-Man so much is because he was in college, he was a man. This was 15 years old. Peter Parker was 15 years old, so this is like Ultimate Spider-Man, which is really cool. Or Spectacular Spider-Man, you know, but Spider-Man and Spider-Man PS4 is 20 years old. He's been Spider-Man for eight years. That's insane. So that's why I'm so excited for it. And everything from day one about Spider-Man PS4 excited me. The suit, the voice acting from Yuri Lowenthal, the, you know, the, the villain where we already knew from the 2016 show that looked like to be Mr. Negative. Um, the fact that, you know, we're going to get really great graphics and a really great um, team behind this with Insomniac. Everything about it just excites me so much. It's it's not at all like this game. Can anyone says it, it's like The Amazing Spider-Man 2, please? Guys, come on, we've been through this. Check out my videos on it. Not just a specific video. Just watch all my videos on this game. It's not like The Amazing Spider-Man 2, please. Again, this game had less of a budget. It had less time to be worked on from Beanox. And uh, it was a movie time game. So again, it's not an original Spider-Man game. It's original. It's it's a movie time game, which is why I love Shared Dimensions, but I hate Edge of Time because it was the same situation. Like again, Edge of Time is my least favorite Spider-Man game. The story was really weird. Soundtrack was okay. Graphics. Were Crash and uh, you know they the consistent arguing and repetitive stuff from uh, Shared Dimensions um, is the same thing with this game. Like the same the reason why I say this game is the worst Spider-Man game of all time and not like Friend or Foe, for example, is because they they reused a lot of animations. I know that's the same thing with uh, Edge of Time, but that's a linear Spider-Man game, and some people like that game story. So whatever, I really don't like it. Uh, this though, the story is not that good. Um, the animation's bad. Graphics for the PS4 don't look anything better than what we were, what we had in, uh, you know, The Amazing Spider-Man 1. They look worse than The Amazing Spider-Man 1, I think. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, just a lot of letdowns and a lot of repetitive stuff from the other Amazing Spider-Man 1 games. So that's why it's said to be the worst Spider-Man game of all time, and, uh, just all the stuff that it has. I think you guys agree, too, because even though you guys say that this is the worst Spider-Man game of all time, for my radioactive replay, Edge of Time has the least amount of views for all of my radioactive replays. So clearly, you guys seem to agree with me that uh, it's the it's not a good Spider-Man game. It may not be the worst Spider-Man game of all time, but it's definitely not one of my favorites, and it's definitely not fun. Um, yeah, you know, I don't like it at all. Uh, yeah, you know, watch my review of it, and uh, definitely. Um, but yeah, Venom, please. Tom Hardy is going to kick ass as Eddie Brock. I already know for a fact. It's going to be so sick seeing him as a Venom. I'm like, come on. Can, can you imagine Tom Hardy getting the, the symbiote on him and turning into Venom for the first time? Christ, that's just... That is, it, 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 oh, it, it, I can't even talk. That's how, you know, befalled I am, because that's how I can't even talk because of how excited I am. I'm just really excited for it. Again, it, it might be trash. It, you know, it probably will end up being trash. I understand, but still, come on. Tom Hardy as Venom? It's like the same thing with Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. Can you say perfect casting? I can say perfect casting. Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy was perfect casting. Um, uh, you know, Michael Keaton as Vulture was perfect casting. Uh, Chris Hemsworth as Thor is perfect casting. And, uh, you know, it's gonna be freaking awesome. So, perfect casting hands down for Tom Hardy. Um, what else? I think I've already talked about everything I can talk about here. Um... I don't know. Let's see this again in slow motion. Yeah! Freestyle! Woohoo! New all the way, baby. Can't mess with the 1940s. Good day for a swell bout. Let's fight! Finished! No, we're getting pretty close, though. I think, what, I have two more left? Please let this be over soon. Here we go. I'm, I'm like, cracking my... If you hear, like, cracking, that's me cracking my fingers. 
Getting really excited. Oh my god, I have three more. Okay, we can do this. Let's just finish them all up. This is gonna be the longest episode, I think, of all time. Uh, because <laughs> in, uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 1 Radioactive Replay, I did an episode that was a, uh, hour long. Like, an hour and three minutes long. And this, I'm just doing the arcade challenges, so wow, we are gonna get into a real big feud right here. So, yeah, definitely, uh, stick around for this fight. Woo! Ba-bam! What else? You know, um, Insomniac, I want to see Sucker Punch's game from, uh, you know, Paris Games Week or whatever they're working on, whenever they're working on it. Um, games that I am excited for besides Spider-Man PS4, uh, like I just said, uh, Sucker Punch, that's what you guys are asking me. Like, what other games are you excited for? I mean, just besides Spider-Man PS4 and Spider-Man PS4. Um, definitely Sucker Punch. I love Assassin's Creed, but I don't know if I'm excited for Origins. Again, Spidey Vigilante got it, and he's really excited for it, and I'm... I love Assassin's Creed. My favorite Assassin's Creed game is Brotherhood, um, because that game was just awesome. I love Rome. Ezio was badass in that game. Um, the, the, uh, Cesare Borgia in that game was a great villain. Um, Origins, though, like, it looks cool. Um, Egypt, though, I don't know if I'm really sold on Egypt. I know it looks cool with, uh, Basilisks and Pharaohs, and Cleopatra, and Julius Caesar, that looks cool, but, um, you know, I really, I don't know, something about it just kind of, you know, tears me away from it, and again, I'm, I'm also saving up money for Spider-Man PS4, again, we don't know if there's going to be a collector's edition, or a bundle with Spider-Man, you know, like, if there's going to be a, a PlayStation-themed, you know, a, a Spider-Man-themed PlayStation based on Spider-Man PS4, if that makes sense. You know, like, with Batman Arkham Knight, they had the silver Batman PS4, which is actually what I have, and, uh, the silver controller, and it had a silhouette of Arkham Knight on it, or Batman Arkham Knight on it, which is awesome. That's what I have, uh, and, uh, it's freaking beautiful, and so hopefully, you know, since this is a freaking PS4 exclusive, hopefully we get something about that, um, or, you know, with that, I should say. Um, uh, you know, uh... South Park Fractured Butthole. Check it out. It's your boy played it recently on his channel. He did a great job. Uh, he's really funny in it. Uh, his game plays top notch. Uh, that game is freaking hilarious. I sadly, you know, I want to buy it, but again, I'm saving up for Spider-Man PS4. So I saw the whole game. I saw, like, a full playthrough of the game. I saw all the bosses, and oh my god. Like, I like Stick of Truth, but this is right up my alley. Because Stick of Truth was all about fantasy and, you know, Lord of the Rings stuff. That's I'm not really into that, all that stuff. Like, I don't like... Uh, Lord of the Rings. I'm, I'm a, uh, you know, I, I definitely like Star Wars more than Lord of the, uh, you know, like, you know, Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or anything like that, but I'm, I'm not, like, super pumped about The Last Jedi, you know, like, oh my god, Star Wars, Episode 8, like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't really care that much. I'm more, more comics, guys, I'm Marvel and DC all the way, which is why Justice League and Thor Ragnarok I'm hyped for, and Infinity War, of course, but nothing can beat my anticipation for Spider-Man PS4. Even Infinity War. Infinity War can't beat my anticipation for Spider-Man PS4. That's how excited I am for it. Um, you know, what else? Uh, yep. Well said, Spider-Man. Um, what? I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank here. I've already talked about everything I can think of. Um, huh. Very stylish. Jeez, I don't know. Um, oh, oh, oh yeah, so the Pierre uh, Parker collab, again, uh, Paris Games Week is on October 30th, and I think continues after that, because it's called Paris Games Week, so, you know, on the 30th, I think, is when they, they do their showcase, so on the 30th is where they're going to be showing off, like, all their announcements and stuff for other games that are coming soon and, you know, releasing, uh, like, you know, hopefully Spider-Man PS4 and, uh, other games, um, you know, what else, um, but again, uh, the Peter Parker collab, it's halfway finished. I finished recording to Cable Sam, OK, and uh, Johnny Obeyed, who is a, they're all really awesome guys. They're very nice, very friendly, very awesome overall. Go follow them on Twitter, they're awesome guys. And it's halfway done. I have uh, two more guys to talk to. I have the one and only Oliver, who suggested the video topic that I'm gonna talk to tomorrow, um, on Friday. Uh, by the time this video is uploaded, it might be Friday already, or you know, who knows. Um, or maybe later, uh, but, uh, you know, um, definitely stay tuned for that, it's gonna be very fun. Uh, heads up ahead of time, the video may have a lot of me repeating myself, but again, it's just to kind of let you guys know 
like, oh, what the situation is with what Insomniac Games have said about Peter Parker gameplay, what they've said about the story of Peter, what they've said about his age, how the age and himself can affect the story, and what that's going to mean for gameplay, and again, what they've said, where he is very smart, he works, um, you know, as a scientist, so, like, what's that mean, what's going to happen? Um, there's a lot of stuff that could happen that's going on with, you know, Peter Parker gameplay, and we're just very excited for it, and the collab is going to be very, very fun. Um, and I think ahead of time, just as a little heads up, uh, you know, I always like to use different Spider-Man themed music in my videos. I think this video, the Peter Parker collab, is going to use, um, the Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Spider-Man theme, not Infinite. Infinite is a bit too orchestral, um, and a bit too fast. At least Spider-Man for, uh... Marvel vs. Capcom 3, it's it's a bit, you know, classic. It's arcadey. Like this, it, it fits. Um, I don't know. This Getting close, man, guys. I Two more. Whew, gotta make it. The, the last challenge is obviously the hardest challenge, um, but that's not saying much. Just get rid of that stupid drone. Dumb. Um, what other game? I really want Persona 5. Again, <laughs> I'm not that into anime, guys, so don't worry. But Persona 5 just looks like crazy fun i mean like i don't know why but i'm always in the games like oh you can go to a school and you can interact with people not sims i'm not into sims but i don't know like you know have you guys played bully bully kicks ass that was the first game that really introduced that type of mechanic before sims i think or at least the main game that really showcased it well like in that game you could have a relationship with a girl in your school you can go to classes you can go around the campus, you can go around town that the school is located in. You could uh, ride your bike, you could hang out with jocks, you could hang out with nerds, you could hang out with uh, the greasers, which is the freaking best. Um, and that's the type of game I like, and that's also kind of what I'm hoping for uh, Spider-Man PS4. You know, for Peter Parker gameplay, hopefully being able to freedom as Peter, doing stuff around the city as Peter, not as Spider-Man, but as Peter. Who knows? Um, you know, what else? You know, Justice League... Thor Ragnarok, Infinity War, games, you know, Days Gone looks cool to me, it looks like Last of Us, but with bikes, um, but definitely Last of Us 2, I'm super pumped for, um, my dad loves Last of Us 2, same thing with me, um, and yeah, you know, I'm just really excited for a lot of the upcoming games for PlayStation, um, PlayStation always has the best exclusive guy, I don't care what you say, I'm sorry, but you can't deny PlayStation has better, uh, better exclusives than Xbox, even though I'm freaking so mad that Sunset Overdrive is only on Xbox One. However, some interesting news, uh, Insomniac on Twitter was talking about uh, Sunset Overdrive for Blocktober, that's their kind of video game thing for October, they just talked about video game dev stuff, uh, like developer stuff, and they showed... Um, a tweet that they posted saying, Oh, we would love to make Sunset Overdrive 2, like we just need a publisher, since they're not with Microsoft anymore. Because again, that was a Xbox One exclusive, and you know how great Microsoft is with handling their exclusives. They just love doing really dumb games, even though they're lucky because they have Cuphead, so I give them that. But, you know, um, they don't have the rights to, uh, you know... Sunset Overdrive 2, so uh, Insomniac needs to find a publisher. So is it going to be Sony, or, you know, Activision, or, you know, I don't know any other publishers, really. Um, but yeah, mainly them, because Insomniac is not a publisher. You know, um, that's why with, like, uh, you see Sony. Sony is always the ones to give the publishing backup. So it's like, that's why Spider-Man PS4 is so different. Like, we've never had an exclusive Spider-Man game only on the PlayStation 4 that is, you know, being made from Insomniac and published directly from Sony. And they showed it off at E3, and at E3, they had, like, the most showed-off trailer at the end of the uh, showcase that, because it was the last thing that they showed in the in the uh, E3 presentation was Spider-Man PS4. So, clearly, Sony is very confident in this game. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'm just very happy that Insomniac is making it, and I just can't wait to see more of it, and um, I think they're going to do a kick-ass job. Um... What else? You know, I'm sorry. I always blank on this stuff. Um, games already talked about. You know, Persona 5. I really want Persona 5. Persona 5 looks awesome. Um, the soundtrack kicks all kinds of butt. It's so good. South Park, God of War looks all right to me. You know, I'm way more excited for uh, Spider-Man PS4 than God of War. God of War looks awesome still. Um, Days Gone, of course. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, huh. I guess maybe Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, but I don't have it. Um, even though you saw when I 
you know, the first part of this game, I it looked like I had it, but I don't. It's actually the demo of the game. I download the demo just to try it, and I'm like, yeah, I'm really bad at fighting games. I thought I could actually be okay, you know, because uh, I thought I could play it for you guys and actually be okay at a fighting game. I'm not, guys. I, I suck at 2D fighting games. I kick all sorts of butt, though, in Soul Calibur, but in a 2D side-scrolling fighting game like Injustice, I'm sorry, I'm the worst. That's why I suck at NetherRealms games like Mortal Kombat and Injustice, and also uh, Capcom's games like Street Fighter and uh, Marvel's Capcom. Um, what else? Oh yeah, so again, even though I'm not asking you guys to, but if we do get to 10,000 subscribers, I will do another q and I will have you guys ask me questions. It could be stuff about my personal life, it could be Spidey Squad stuff, it could be, you know... DC stuff, who knows, so it could be a really fun time, and, uh, you know, just feel free to ask me whatever you want, and, uh, I'll be sure to try and, uh, answer your questions as, uh, to the best of my abilities, and, yeah, if we get to 10k, it'll be my, my 10k subscriber special to do a giant Q&A, and I think you guys will like it. I know I will. Whoa, snap, oh boy, that was close. Oh boy, uh, guys, come on, I know you're huge and violent, but please don't try and attack me. Rejected. Again, the fact that the combat mandatorily requires you to use Shocker's gauntlets is so sad. Like, why? It should just be an option to use as part of combat. Not like, oh, in order for you to take out these heavy guys, you need to use Shocker's gauntlets, which I think is kind of stupid. Um, you guys may like it, I don't. Um, what else? You know? I don't know what else there is to talk about, really. Uh, I'm trying to think. Huh. I guess Radioactive Review, so again, Radioactive Review is in fact coming after I beat the game. Prototype Playback is still happening, so hopefully by the time that this part is out, you will see Prototype Playback Part 3, where, you know, Alex is just talking to Dana and everything, and we go and do some crazy stuff within the city. It's gonna be really fun, and uh, I'm really looking forward to you guys seeing more, but you guys seem to like that more than this. Again, like I said in uh, Part 8, I think. Uh, you got, or part six, I think? Whatever, a certain part. The prototype playback gets less views, but you guys like it more. So that's very happy to me. I, I'm glad that you guys like prototype as much as I do. It's awesome. It's a great game. Um, and yeah, definitely stay tuned for more of it. And that's the thing. That's what I forgot to mention. What I'm going to talk about now is the next Spider-Man game. So again, uh, Spider-Man, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 is what we're playing now afterwards, which is also very interesting, will be the last of the current gen Spider-Man games. So on the PlayStation 3 and X, uh, PlayStation 4, we're done. So you know, also Xbox 360 because I played, uh, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 1 and uh, um, Web of Shadows on the Xbox 360. Um, so, you know, after this game, it's going to be the end of it. So what's next is going to be all the, the Spider-Man games on the PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1 era of consoles, which I have all of them, which is awesome. So I have Spider-Man PS1, I have Spider-Man Enter Electro, I have uh, Friend or Foe, I have um, Spider-Man 3 on the PS2, and of course I have Spider-Man 1 the movie game, Spider-Man 2, and Ultimate Spider-Man. And of course I know all you guys are wanting me to play Ultimate Spider-Man next, however, it's gonna be weird because I forget where I, I put my PS2, so I'm gonna have to dig it up and, you know, make sure it still works. Um, and then after that, you know, we're gonna do, um, you know... All the PS2 games, so the movie tie-in games, Ultimate Spider-Man, PS1, Spider-Man game, and, you know, all that. So, it's going to be really great, and, of course, you guys want me to do Ultimate Spider-Man. However, I'm thinking I'm going to save that for, like, the very last radioactive replay ever is, in fact, Ultimate Spider-Man. Because I think that would be really fun. And, again, I'm going to try to live stream Ultimate Spider-Man. See if I can do that, because I haven't really tested out the full capabilities of live streaming yet um, with my laptop. Uh, but I think... If I were to do that, I think live streaming Ultimate Spider-Man would be very fun. Um, and you guys would like it as well, because that way you guys could ask me stuff in the comments while it's happening. Uh, you guys can also, like, you know, give me tips and tricks. Like, oh, Evan, you know, try and do this while chasing Venom or something. You know, like, so something like that. So it'd be really fun. Um, and, of course, Spider-Man 2, delivering pizzas with Mr. Aziz and all that's going to be great. Um, heal really quick, Spider-Man. Come on. Do it fast. Quick. That's as good as it's going to get, I guess. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, the next Spider-Man game, I won't tell you what it is, uh, but I think you guys will like it. It's not Ultimate Spider-Man or Spider-Man 2, just a heads up, but I think you guys will like it. 
Um, and, you know, definitely, after I beat this game, though, I will not do the Spider-Man game, because I know for a fact that I'm still going to be playing Prototype Playback after I complete it, you know, or I mean, uh, after, after I'm, I'm done with this game, because I think I'll still be playing it, because I think I'll still be doing the missions of it, um, you know, so once I beat The Amazing Spider-Man 2, we're just going to be doing more Prototype Playback, but definitely after I beat Prototype Playback, definitely expect some, uh, you know, Spider-Man goodness on the PS2. I mean, it's going to be really sick, again, uh, hopefully, now the thing is, though, with the PS2 games, please, that is garbage. That's the first challenge I died on, and I always hate this challenge so much, because I always die during it, um, because of the, the dumb fire and the bombs and everything. I'm not skilled! I let you guys all down with my skills again. I'm a worthless punk. This this video is an hour long. Oh my god, that's insane. Okay, um, let's give this a try. Come on, yeah. Peter, I want to go to the thing. Come on, thanks. Um, yeah, you know, uh, what I was trying to say is that with the PS2 games, they're really old, you know? So it's going to be a really ch challenging thing to try and make intros for it. I will try my darn best to try and make intros for the PS2 Spider-Man games. But, if I can't, please forgive me. Um, I'm sorry that- I know that's one of the things that you guys really love about this series, is that I make intros to showcase you how different this is from a standard Spider-Man playthrough, and, you know, how dedicated I am to this series to try and, you know, showcase how different each mission is and each video is, and, uh, you know, with Ultimate Spider-Man being one of the most favorite Spider-Man games of all time, if not the best Spider-Man game of all time, um, you know, that's why we're all very excited for it. Hopefully I can live stream it, and if I- uh, don't live stream it, uh, there will be no intro, so, or what am I saying, so, keep that in mind, so if I do live stream Ultimate Spider-Man, there will not be intros for it because it's a live stream, if I don't live stream it, then there will be intros, since it's a, you know, a playthrough, so, keep that in mind when making up your decision for what you want me to do, um, okay, oh my goodness gracious, this part of the game really makes me upset, come on guys, I don't want to die, fire, Plus bombs, which again, that part sucks with the uh, glider, the glider guy, you know, hanging above the skies, just throwing bombs at you while you're doing special takedowns on them. It's kind of stupid. Man, it's gonna be really humiliating if I'm terrible at this. Dang it, Peter! Don't jinx it. You're you're proving our dang ah no, Peter. You're you're proving him right. Okay, jeez, you're correct. We are terrible at this. How'd you know? Oh my god, and we have one left. Come on, we're gonna do it for Put Superior Spider-Man, so... Please, come on. I know this this uh, video is an hour long already, and I highly apologize Honestly, for that. You're probably not gonna be able to watch this entire video. If you did, just watch it in the background. You know, all I do is beat up these guys. If you want to see my skills, then awesome. But if you just want to hear me talk about tons of different things, then yeah. Um, let me take out this idiot first, because he's really starting to make me mad. Um, try and take you out as well, and triple kick, and finish... No, not again. Ugh, I hate that guy so much. Please, get down here. Sure, I web pull him and I go after the other guy who's not on the glider. Makes sense. Yeah, kick you right in the fire. Take that. I'm done with you, okay? Go flap your stuff somewhere else. I want my baseball. I mean my lawyer. You guys don't know that's a gamer poop reference. Great, so I get punched without being able to counter and just get in the fire. And now I'm burning alive as well. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Beanox. No. Rejected. Really? Call me a punk again. See how that works. Pretty dope. Again, boring combat though, but pretty dope. By pretty dope, I just mean being able to just punch all these guys. I know, Peter, but really don't want you to die right now. If we die our third time, that's going to be very upsetting, please. So give me a solid and don't do that. Okay, great. So I want to evade the fire, and yet I counter the guy's attack in the fire. Mm, no. Game. Why? Why, why? why would you do that, you know? <laughs> why, what purpose would you need to have that happen? Okay, let's give this a try. Yes, come on. Third time's the charm, right? Or sorry, fourth time's the charm because I freaking suck at this part. Um, if you guys beat this the, the first time, awesome. Uh, if you're an idiot like me who can't beat this part the first try, yeah. My skills, I'm sorry guys. 
I swear, I thought I could be able to do this, and I won't use the excuse like, oh, uh, I'm tired. You know, it's been a long, a long day. No, guys. Yeah, not again. Seriously, I gotta stop doing that. Pin you down and pin you. Oh, he's dead. Okay, great. Okay, I don't want to attack the guy behind me. Let me just punch this guy first. Great. That glider came up really slow. Great, so you took out both your friends. I'm done with you. And also done with you. Nice. It would. Great. Of course the Daily Bugle never gets pictures of me winning like this. Yeah, you know how they are, always trying to make Spider-Man look terrible. Actually, that's very accurate. Okay, just yeah, um, what, what else? You know, uh, PS2 games, or the PS1, PS2 games, you know, um, to list them off. So the, the remaining Spider-Man games overall for Radioactive Replay that I have not done yet is Spider-Man PS1, Spider-Man uh, Spider 2 Enter Electro, Spider-Man the movie game, Spider-Man 2 the movie game, Spider-Man 3 the movie game on the PS2, um, Ultimate Spider-Man, and, uh... Friend or foe? Yeah, friend or foe. Um, I think that's it, right? I might be forgetting something, but I don't think I am. Okay, I don't want to burn alive, please, guys. Can you just avoid the fire? Can you try and come towards me? Ah, great. More fire. Where am I going? What happened? I couldn't even go... F oh, man. Oh, the rage. The rage is coming, guys. Oh, boy. This is... Oh, wow, this is the longest episode ever. This is very upsetting for me. I'm actually, I am actually very disappointed in myself right now. This is actually disgusting. I'm actually disgusted in myself that not only am I playing this game still, but I'm actually losing this much on this game. And again, the, the, the difficulty shouldn't matter. This game's pretty easy on hard. And I did this, I believe, the first try on hard when I was playing it in 2014. When this game came out, when I was, uh... However old I was. 2014 min minus 1998 is uh, 16, right? Yeah, so I was 16 years old when I first played this game, and uh, I can't believe I'm failing, so that really upsets me. I'm 19 years old now. I should be able to do this the first time, but now we're on try number four or five. God, make, make it stop. Put you out of your misery, okay? We're done with you. Okay, should be dead, but no worries. Probably shouldn't have done that. Okay, good. Yeah, but shouldn't that be a privilege, Spider-Man? At least they get to be taken out with style like that. But bam Skills to pay all sorts of bills. I think we are in hell now, because that's what the fire is supposed to represent. Just hell all over the place. Oh god, here we go. Again. They really don't. It's starting to piss me off that I'm dying again from this. Um, yeah, again... The PS2 Spider-Man games is going to be very tricky because the only thing that I can edit to make an intro are the cutscenes. Um, <clears throat> like the Ultimate Spider-Man cutscenes and uh, the, the just the other Spider-Man game cutscenes in general. Um, there's not really any trailers for those games in HD, so that's why it's going to be kind of a challenge. Um, but still, I will try my very darn best to make intros for them. But mainly the PS1 games might be a really hard problem to try and make an intro for them, but we'll see. You know, I'll try my very best, but if I don't, just, just don't be mad at me. I'll just just know that I've made intros for all the other Spider-Man games that I've done playthroughs of, so yeah, just give me that. Hey, are we almost done here? Wave 3, right? Come on, let this be over quick. I want to be over with it now. I didn't even expect I was going to be able to take it in a whole hour. At least I didn't die any other time. This is like the accumulation of all the other times where I survived. Um, so yeah. Great! Take that from you, and come ride you over here. Don't know how you're not burning in that fire, but sure, you can just, you know, have fireproof equipment all over the place, including your own face, so that's impressive. Get out of the fire, pan! Ow, 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 fire, not so good. My luck, now I'll get busted for smoking in public. Okay, please! Wow, okay. No, I need to run. Okay, here, just don't do anything. Okay, that glitch is very insane right there. Did you guys see that? You must have seen that. Come on, bring you down to my level, okay? Yeah, burn the fire, enjoy. As for you, I'm just gonna clothesline you. I'm done with you. There you go. 
bring you down to my level and kick you right in the face. Yeah, I'm just I'm just tired of talking, guys. This is this is pure focus time, okay? My witty banter and amazing charm has got the best of me this time, but I won't let it happen here. Even though it's already happened like four other times in this one part of the challenge mode, so yeah. I failed you guys. Whoa! Um Yeah, you get Raid Active Review is uh going to be very <clears throat> very bad. Like like by bad I mean like hating on this game bad or you know, giving it a lot of cons, I should say, but definitely staying tuned for it. Still, it's going to be an interesting look back at this game. Uh, but yeah, this game, I don't have any fond memories with it. There's not, like Godzilla Mendoza said, he doesn't have one fond memory of Spider-Man 3, which actually kind of makes me a bit upset. I don't have any fond memories with this game. Like, again, I forgot Shocker was in this game at one point. Same thing with Kraven. Oh, Christ. Okay, here we go. Last boss. Last boss. Last wave, guys. We're ready. And it's just a bunch of fire and guys and goblin gliders. Yeah. Accurate. Like, I don't have any fond memories of this game. No boss fights, none of the challenges, even Stan Lee at the end of the game where he talks to us uh, in the comic book store. Even though that ending is great being able to talk to Stan Lee still, it's like, I don't remember it. I actually don't remember it, which is sad. Uh, nothing's memorable in this game. But the side missions are all repetitive. The city is... I guess pretty, but still, the graphics from uh, the Amazing Spider-Man 1 game are much better than this game, and this game was on the PS4, so, and look, this game looks the best on the PS4, out of the other consoles, like Xbox 360, and uh, Xbox One, PS3, and PS4, on the PS4 it looks the best, um, but still, that doesn't mean, even though this game did in fact come out on the PS4 and Xbox One, I don't think this is a next-gen game, I think it was like ported onto it. I know it was made for it, but still, I think the Spider-Man PS4, I'm, I'm counting as like the first ever next-gen Spider-Man yes, experience. Awesome. We did it! Jesus! I'm sorry if that was loud, but my god, that took way longer than it needed to be. Oh, and we got the superior Spider-Man suit. Awesome. And all the posters, all the concept art in the uh, comic stand. Great. Wow. This video is above, it's almost as long as a movie. This video is as long I'm as a movie. This. I'm sorry. The only thing I hurt will be my pride. Yeah, I, I think I really did hurt my pride there. And look at this. So the concept art we just got from... Actually, that looks really cool as a concept art. Um, that's just from the opening cutscene. Shocker. Looking good. Shocker looks really cool in this game. I do think even though I forgot he was in this game. Woo! Wow! My love. Please, make it stop. Someone screenshot that. It's too good. Um, you know, Oscorp Facility... City at night. I wish the city looked like that at night, but it doesn't. So, yeah. Um, and, yep, those concept arts are when we be, uh, do the races, I think. So, yep. While my friends check out the band at Jazzy Johnny's, I get to swing around town getting beat up. Ah, the glamorous life of a superhero. You mean that superhero with his sweet-looking gat and trench coat? You bet. Oh, okay, guys, so it's finally over. Statues and trophies and everything, and, uh... Yep, Stanley's just there chilling out. Uh, I think we're gonna go and fight Kalita's next for the big finale. Uh, yeah, that's probably gonna take a long time for me to do since this video is gonna take a long time to render and upload. Uh, stay in tune for it again if you just like seeing me do the uh, you know, arcade challenges. Like thank you. But um, yeah, I know Stanley. I know you're talking, but I'm sorry. I'm really tired. I, this video is almost a half an, an hour and a half long. Uh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Anyway, stay spectacular, Spidey fans. Stay tuned for the finale coming soon. Peace out.